Joe from the YouTube channel Off The Curb Ministries is an all right guy. I've got nothing against him personally. We've seen a few of his videos before and each time it's because he thinks he's got reasons as to why the Bible is true. And of course we've corrected his assertions in the past. However this time he thinks he's debunked evolution. We can't be having that can we? <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Fraud Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a big thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Raycon. Now you may have heard me talk about Raycon's everyday earbuds before. And you might have thought, wait, the same audio quality from the big guys but at half the price. Sounds good. Well, Raycon has sold over 3 million of their previous everyday earbuds, so you know they're a fan favorite. And the upgraded everyday earbuds offer everything you love about Raycon and more. Because now you also get this ergonomic design and multi-point connectivity, which lets you pair with two devices at once, plus active noise cancellation. Seriously, if you've been wanting to check out Raycons, there really is no better time. Their upgraded model will blow you away. You're gonna ask yourself, why you didn't check them out sooner? I mean, the 32 hour battery life is great, of course, but what's really good is the new quick charge function. 10 minutes of charging yields 90 minutes of battery life. Now, these are the most comfortable earbuds that I have tried on. I mean, I do have other earbuds, but these are my go-to for everyday use, especially when I'm writing long scripts for videos. I've also been loving these cool protective case covers. First of all, check out the design. It complements the earbuds colors quite nicely, but not only do they look great, they support wireless charging these cases. So I don't even have to take this case off when I want to get my 90 minutes of use from 10 minutes of charging. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your first purchase of Raycons. Plus, free shipping. Okay, on with today's video, which as I said at the start is from Off The Curb Ministries. Joe seems to think that a certain animal stumps evolutionists. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay, now this has got people outraged because what this little guy will do next is going to cause big problems for a certain group of people. If there was one creature in the animal kingdom that causes evolutionists to question their entire theory, it would be the bombardier beetle. Well, it doesn't, but please continue with this argument. How can I make such a massive claim? Well, you will too when you see what's inside these beetles. Fix your eyes on this. The bombardier beetle contains a masterpiece of engineering design. It has glands in its belly that produce two safe chemicals when kept apart, hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide. But get this, the beetle then sends these chemicals into a sort of storage tank where it keeps them for a rainy day. So. Let's see what happens when the bombardier beetle spots trouble ahead. Once unhappy, the beetle, using a complex valve system, sends these two chemicals into another uniquely designed chamber. And from there, the beetle secretes a special catalyst of enzymes, which when mixed with the two chemicals, creates an overpowering spray, which is 100 degrees Celsius. A masterpiece in evolution, I must say, but let's not forget one thing here. The bombardier beetle is not a finished article. Nothing is. It's just another step in the evolutionary ladder of life. Right, so now we have this scalding hot spray. It's ready. So the bombardier beetle, he sizes up his enemy. He twists his lower body and then rotates the two nozzles at his tail end. And with precise accuracy, he erupts his insane combination at anyone who dares to mess with him. And the craziest thing of all is the bombardier beetle lets out not just one, not just two booms, but 500 booms per second to ensure that he is nobody's lunch today. All wonderful stuff, but I don't really see how that's a problem for evolutionists, buddy. So come on, let's ask the obvious question here. Why does this leave the evolutionist speechless? I'll tell you why. Here we go, this should be good. When you look at this incredibly complex system and you know that this is inside every single bombardier beetle, you have to admit that this system must be carefully designed because any system involving combustion and the fusion of two powerful chemicals must have a mind behind. It. Why? Because anyone who works with combustion knows that many things can 
go easily wrong. These beetles aren't produced by Dave in a chemical plant who's having trouble sleeping with a coffee addiction. These beetles are the culmination of millions of years of natural selection. This is an irreducible complexity argument, plain and simple. I mean, think about it. If evolution is step by step, gradual, unguided changes over millions of years, that means that at some points in the bombardier beetle's history, it had no chemical spray. So what happened the first time that it mixed these two chemicals when it didn't have any storage tank and it didn't have anywhere to hold it, how would it store this 100 degrees mixture and how did it manage to reject and release this spray if it hadn't yet evolved these two nozzles at its tail end? And then the other thing that's got me thinking is what about the storage chambers when they were evolving? How did the first storage chambers have the durability, the thickness not to melt whilst holding this red hot fusion? Did you just say how did the storage chambers in the beetle not melt? Wow. Okay, here we go. Hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide do not react when mixed together without a catalyst. They can remain mixed for any period of time and remain harmless. So first off, this is not some delicate chemical balance that could go supernova at any time. Secondly, the hydroquinones are not unique to the bombardier beetle and is found in most other insects and invertebrates. Now they're produced by cells which harden the skin into an exoskeleton, along with an unpleasant taste making an effective deterrent for predators. On top of that, hydrogen peroxide is a common byproduct from cell metabolism. From an evolutionary perspective, it is not difficult Difficult to see how the bombardier beetle would have evolved through very gradual change. Come on guys, you know as well as I do that if left a chance without all of these parts fully made and fully functioning together, this beetle would burst into a thousand pieces the first time it ever attempted to make its own rocket fuel. Complexity cannot and does not occur instantaneously. You cannot throw a piece of paper in the air and expect it to fold itself into a paper aeroplane and fly away. This is what you are suggesting is happening with the bombardier beetle. It is kind of obvious, isn't it, that such a fragile combustion system must require an intelligent designer. Because if you remove any part of the system, it would be impossible for the bombardier beetle to survive, as it would either destroy itself, or it wouldn't have the tools to protect itself from any bigger animals, and thus would not survive, and would not pass on its genes, and we would not have bombardier beetles today. But you are thinking about natural selection from the point of a starting bombardier beetle. It doesn't work like that. Before the bombardier beetle, there was likely a beetle that did use a chemical defense, but in a different way. And before that, maybe a beetle that secreted chemicals. The point is, there's never a finished article, as I said earlier, it's always changing. But I can hear exactly what you're saying right now. Big deal, Joe. So there's this one beetle which throws a curveball into the theory of evolution. That does not prove that intelligent design happened by a creator. Well, what if I told you that there are examples of what famously has been called irreducible complexity throughout the entire animal kingdom? And I'm gonna show you some of these examples. But first, let's hear from the man himself, Charles Darwin, the author of evolution. He said if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. I wonder what goes through your mind as you hear that, that in other words, the evolution daddy himself is saying that if there is one organism which can be proved that it does not evolve by tiny slight modifications, then everything I've ever said is one big fat lie. But you cannot prove that the bombardier beetle's defense system did not evolve through tiny changes. As I stated earlier, we can show that each part of the system has an evolutionary precursor. The hydroquinone, as I said, is used by other beetles for other things. Again, as I said, the hydrogen peroxide is a byproduct of cell metabolism. The enzymes that trigger the reaction are very common in a lot of organisms. But what of the reaction chamber, maybe? Well, many insects have specialized glands for secreting substances. I mean, the evolution of that chamber could have started off like something similar, like a small gland which secreted a less reactive substance. And the nozzle that sprays the substance? Many other animals adopt a similar strategy, like skunks and some species species of ants. Overall, we can totally debunk your theory by showing that there are pre-existing versions of the bombardier beetle's defense system. Well, did you know that there's not just one organism which is irreducibly complex, but there are many throughout the entire animal kingdom? But come on, Joe, you keep using this term, irreducibly complex. What does it even mean? And just 
put it simply to me, please. Okay, irreducible complexity is the argument that there is life, there are systems which have multiple parts, which interact together, and if you remove just one of these parts, the entire system would not function. This obviously debunks evolution instantly, as according to the evolutionist, all life comes from a simple life form, and by small modifications, more complex systems can be gradually built by natural selection. But when a system is irreducibly complex, it needs every part to be fully developed for the system to work. Which of course points away from an unguided process of millions of years, but points more towards the purposeful arrangements of all of the parts by an intelligent creator. This is another classic misunderstanding of how natural selection works. You think that irreducible complexity debunks evolution because you don't understand evolution. And time and time and time again, you guys always think you do, but you don't. The fossil record is just one example to show how irreducible complexity is nonsense. For example, the evolution of the tetrapod limb. The fossil record shows a gradual step-by-step -step process from fish fin to functioning limb. Each intermediate form was viable and provided several advantages, even though it wasn't a fully formed limb for walking at first. This directly contradicts the idea that the fully functioning walking limb had to just pop into existence. Debunking irreducible complexity. I've had enough of this one now. Joe just doesn't seem to be able to grasp how evolution and natural selection work. And as such, he just thinks he's debunked it. Well, the bombardier beetle says otherwise, my friend. Well, there we go. What do we all think of that one from Off The Curb Ministries and Joe's theories there? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, we're all done and dusted for another Tim Ford Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching. It is, of course, as always appreciated. Please do consider liking the video, subscribing to, and sharing if the feeling takes you. Just enough time to once again thank Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Remember, visit buyraycon.com slash Simon Dan to get 15% off your first purchase of Raycons plus free shipping. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another Flat Earth Meme debunking. See you then.